ships come in many different shapes and sizes. And often the bond is strengthened when others don't accept your choice of friends. But the true test of that bond is the sacrifices you're willing to make to hold on to that special relationship. And that's what our story's about in this episode of Still a Beaver. garage sale was my idea. But do you really think anybody will buy all this junk? Well, not if you call it junk. <laughs> These are collectibles. <laughs> I really think we ought to talk about this garage sale again. A lot of this stuff is irreplaceable. Come on, Beaver, you just don't want to part with your Red River Sam book. But Wally, I was with Red River Sam when he crossed the Pecos. I fought side by side with him as he cleaned up Yuma City. I cried when he went to the Senate. How can you put a price on that? <laughs> hey, look at this. Hey! Get your hands off my monkey. This isn't going to be easy. Well, Dad, here's the stuff we don't want. Tip. That's your math book. How does that get in there? Dad, I need to run to the library so I can get my snake report done. Why go through all that? Freddie Haskell's an expert on snakes. Why don't you go pick his brain? The last time I asked him for help, he'd only do it if I put an apple on my head so I could practice with his crossbow. Well, you're safe. His grandmother does that. But he does know a lot about snakes. Dad, can you give me a ride to the Haskell's? Sure. Can I drop you at the corner? I'm having a bad enough day without seeing Eddie Haskell. <laughs> You know, my services are very valuable, young man. So what have you brought me as payment? A baseball card, a shark's tooth, and a picture of a tribeswoman from National Geographic. <laughs> Worthless. Although my father might pay handsomely for the tribeswoman. <laughs> if you want my assistance, these are my conditions. There they come. First, you have to clean out the snake cages for life. How long do they live? Not their life, stupid. Your life. <laughs> Second, from now on, whenever I insult you, I'd like you to say, thank you, sir. <laughs> okay, pea brain? Yes. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Hi, boys. Freddie, I'm going shopping. Can I pick up anything for you? 
Uh, yeah, get some apples. Grandma's coming over Sunday. Freddie, Grandma's on her feet all day at the car wash. She comes here to rest. <laughs> okay. Now, where was I? Oh, yes. Unlocking the door to the study of snakes, otherwise known as herpetology. Uh, use that in your topic sentence. What's a topic sentence? Uh, never mind, I wouldn't want to clutter your puny cranium. <laughs> Was that an insult? Definitely. Thank you, sir. <laughs> well, snakes are lizards modified for eating larger prey. This is a king snake. Her name is Mrs. Jackson, after my history teacher. <laughs> is Mrs. Jackson poisonous? Well, I can only vouch for the snake. <laughs> now, most people, like my father, are scared senseless of snakes. I mean, in actuality, they are gentle, loyal, and make great pets. This is Arthur, a python, my first and favorite snake. We're closer than any kid in his dog. I'll let you meet him, but don't scare him. Hey, what's the matter, little fella? You're not sick, are you? Maybe he's just faking so he doesn't have to take a test. No, he's really sick. How can you tell? Yesterday's lunch is still alive. It never happened before. We better get him to the vet. I gotta go home, Freddy. This is gonna take too long. I can fix that. My, what a lovely cat you have. Oh, thank you. This is Tasha, descended from a long line of Persian royalty. Oh. Well, this is Arthur. He eats cats. <laughs> That's my boy. Mister, what's in that box? You don't name these. There's no holes. How does it breathe? I don't know. <laughs> Everything will be just fine. I told you never to bring that thing in here again. <laughs> Hello, Freddy. Dr. Maxwell. Boy, are you the lucky one. You know, whenever you come in here, this place is empty. A coincidence, I assure you. I'm here today because I'm worried about Arthur. Oh? What seems to be the matter? Well, he's not eating and his eyes don't have the usual twinkle. <laughs> hmm. Not eating, huh? Now, I think I know what's wrong. I'm so glad, sir. Freddie, you remember the last time you brought Arthur in for his checkup? And I told you then, he was getting very old. Well, so's my Uncle Roy, but he still eats like a horse. <laughs> Freddie, there's only one reason a snake stops eating. And I think to avoid further suffering, it might be best if I put him to sleep. Good idea. I always feel a lot better after I have a good night's sleep. He doesn't mean that kind of sleep. He wants to kill him, you blockhead. Thank you. Freddy, it's best not to drag this out. Never. I want a second opinion. I want a specialist. Well, if you change your mind, I'll be here. Thanks. It's comforting to know that the snake killer is just a phone call away. <laughs> tried everything. Vitamins, hormones. I even put them near the TV when that faith healer came on. And it doesn't seem to be getting any better. Oh, well, there's one last hope. Laugh therapy. I found this book in the library. This guy says that laughing cured him. How do you know Arthur has a sense of humor? Oh, he loves a good joke as much as the next reptile. <laughs> hey, Arthur. A priest, a rabbi, and a snake walk into a bar. The rabbi turns to the snake and says, hey, Freddy. You got two seconds to lock up those slimy serpents. You've never gotten over that time you put a rattler in his lunchbox. He 
it was a fake. I know, but even the paramedics couldn't convince him. Make sure none of their lunch is roaming around either. All right, you can come in now. Frederick, I'm very disappointed in you. You didn't do your chores today. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. You didn't take out the garbage or pay my bills, and I told you to fire my secretary. She showed up at work again. Please accept my apologies, sir. I've been terribly busy with Arthur. The vet says he's gonna die. Oh, that reminds me, Kirk. Why don't you call the hospital and find out how your rich old lad is doing? Sorry, he went home today. Tough old bird. <laughs> Don't worry, Arthur. I'm not going to listen to the vet. Look, son, that vet knows his stuff. Didn't he help you get over the chicken pox? I'm not going to let Arthur die. He's my friend. You won't be losing a friend. You'll be together forever. You'll make a nice belt. He's going to get better. I know it. I'm going to help him. I don't care if I have to spend every second with him. Well, I care. You're not going to spend all day locked up with a bunch of vipers. You'll have plenty of time for that when you take over the business. Sir! Look, son, there comes a time when you have to put away childish things. Be a man. Now, tonight, we'll take your allowance, call my bookie, and place a bet. <laughs> we'll split the winnings. You don't understand, sir. Arthur... Enough lip already. Tomorrow morning, you take him to the vet. Right after you fire my secretary. <laughs> Kelly, Oliver, I stand before you without pretense, without the condescending charm you've come to know and love. <laughs> Why, you may ask? Quite simply, to ask for your help. <laughs> all right, all right, let me try a different tactic. <laughs> help me, please, have mercy on my pitiful soul. Anyone for ice cream? Yeah. Somebody's got to help me take care of Arthur. My dad wants the vet to put him to sleep. i got to find some place to hide him. Freddy, you're really being sincere, aren't you? Truly. Sorry. It's almost impossible to tell. <laughs> so, what do you say? Sure. We'll take care of him. You will? You'll do it for me? No, we'll do it for the snake. <laughs> now, you've got to make sure that no adults find out about this. They'll tell my dad. Grown-ups have a way of sticking together like nuns on a bus. <laughs> Ready? You leaving so soon? Why, yes, Mrs. Cleaver. Anything wrong? Oh, sorry, I was a little preoccupied. That's a lovely outfit you're wearing. That's much better. May I come in? I'm going to go through your clothes for the garage sale. Uh, no! I mean, uh, could you come back later? We'd like a few last moments alone with our clothes for you. Okay. I'll be down in the garage. You let me know when you're emotionally ready to make the break. <laughs> Gotta get Arthur out of here. Back. Hey, wait a minute. Where are you going with that? Did your grandmother tell you to get my favorite rug for that garage sale? Oh, no, Dad. You don't have to make excuses. I know what's going on here. Look, guys, I want you to take this rug and put it someplace nobody's gonna find it until this garage sale nonsense blows over. We won't let you down, Dad. Thanks, guys. You know, you're good kids. Hey, why don't you take some money and oh, go buy some ice cream or something? Thanks. <laughs> I know you're in 
in there, I hear voices. <laughs> hey, love, can I do something for you? Well, as a matter of fact, you can. You can let me know what toys you've decided to sell at the garage sale. Oh, sure. You can have all the educational toys. Really, open the door this minute. See your baby? Uh, better not, Daddy. She's contagious. Oh, I'll be real careful. Mm -hmm. Say, Uncle Wally, let's forget this girl stuff and uh, go outside and shoot some hoops. Well, I don't... And you can tell me exactly how you won the Springfield case? <laughs> oh, you uh, heard about that, huh? Legendary. <laughs> yeah, but you didn't hear the real story. You see, when we started the season... No one expected this to be anything better than a 500 team. But you know what happened? Yeah. Don't get too attached to that closet. Because tomorrow, you're going back to Kelly. Until I smile at you, I'll never know what good would it do. What good would it do? young man, this might be a good time to find out if your brother's military school gives family discounts. And if you like, I have a few suggestions as to what you can do to punish your kids. That's okay, Eddie. We find our methods very effective. Sure. Give them some more milk and cookies. That'll show them who's boss. I feel awful about this, Mrs. Cleaver. I'm sorry you and Arthur couldn't have met under more favorable circumstances. There's no need to apologize, Freddie. Just get that thing out of my house. Certainly. It's in the break from the dining room. That's a strange place to put him. I didn't put him there. A whole evening wasted on that stupid snake. And I was going to buy a new suit tonight. By now, the back of that guy's van is probably cleaned out. Freddie, are you all right? Yeah, but I fear that Arthur is taking a turn for the worse. Oh, yeah, he does look bad. Okay, Kurt, drive him over to the vet. No, you can't. There's still hope. The new strides are being made in medicine every day. I've heard of a clinic in Mexico that's doing wonderful things. He's going to the vet. No, he's not. Look, calm down, son. It's no big deal. Do I look upset? Oh, Eddie, can't you be a human being for once in your life? Okay, okay. Look, son. For everything, there is a season. And a time for every purpose under heaven. A time to laugh and a time to cry. A time to live and a time to die. Turn, turn. You feel better? No. All right, I tried. Come on, let's go. No! You're never going to get your hands on him. Hey, hey, what's for dinner? Whatever you want to make. Freddy, unlock the door. Come on out and we'll talk. I'll talk, Mom. But I'm not coming out. I don't care what you do to me. Oh, Eddie, I'm worried about him. He's upset. It's your fault. You've always coddled him. Every time he cried that first day you brought him home from the hospital, 
You ran in to see what was the matter. Don't you have any feelings? He really loves that Arthur. It's just a stupid snake. Not like somebody that means a lot to us, like your Uncle Larry. That's Uncle Harry. Larry, Harry, what's the difference? I'm trying to make a point. So am I. <laughs> Arthur, you've got to eat. If you don't, you'll... You just got to eat. Freddy, dear, let me in. Your dad's gone. Here's some, have some. No, thanks. I'm too upset to eat. Arthur's breathing is labored. Oh. Don't you think maybe we should take him to the vet? No, never. Maybe I can make him better. That's why I have to stay out here. Well, how about school? I don't care about school. Arthur needs me. Tell you what. You go to school. And I promise to come out here every hour and check up on him. What if Dad comes home? Oh, I can handle him. Worst comes to worst. I'll just tell him my father's out here. <laughs> Come on, I'm home. I'm going to go out and see Daddy, Arthur. Wait. But I'm going to go out and see how Arthur is. Oh, good afternoon, son. My, that's a handsome shirt you're wearing. What are you doing home, sir? Well, thought you might like this. A puppy! Wow! Why'd you give me a... Arthur! Okay. There, you see, I told you you'd be fine. You did it! You killed him! You took him to the vet! Didn't have to. Little rascal slithered through the pearly gates on his own. It's true. I went and I checked on him all morning. Then around two, I went out and... And he was gone. Your father and I felt that maybe the puppy would help. He's a cute little fellow, but sleeps outside, though. I can't believe I'll never see Arthur again. Look, honey, you did everything you could for him. And you always have your memories. No one can take those away. Look at it this way. He had a long and happy life. So what should we call the puppy? I know you mean well, Mom, but nothing can take the place of Arthur. Mom, you really loved him, didn't you? He was my friend. He was always there for me, no matter what. Sometimes when I have a really bad day, you know, the kind where the teacher keeps calling on you and you don't know the answers. And then you find out everyone but you got invited to the big party. No matter how bad the day was, come home and Arthur would be waiting for me. And he'd curl around me and make me feel better. Good old wolf. <laughs> Pardon? What a great dog. He'd run over to me and lick my face and things just wouldn't seem so bad. I didn't know you had a dog, sir. He wasn't just a dog. He was my friend. I taught him to sit, heal, and bite on command. <laughs> talk to him. He liked me all the time. Like most of the people I know. I love that dog. It's okay. He's not really gone. You've always got your memories. Kind of like you and Arthur, huh? I guess you'll miss him like I miss Wolf. Life stinks. <laughs> it's okay. Even though I loved him, I know a lot of people just thought he was a cold-blooded reptile. Oh, 
A lot of people think that about your dad. But I still love him. I'll tell you what. How about we give Arthur the best darn funeral your money can buy? Arthur would like that. We'll dig a nice long trench out by the rose bushes and we'll bury him there. That would be a fitting farewell for me. And while we're at it, we'll put in that new sprinkler system. 